Between these two steels, which one is more corrosion resistant? Now it's actually steel number two, but it looks like people were fairly divided about that. So let's get into it. A gentleman on the Spotico forum had actually shared some tables with information that he had generated using JMAP Pro, which is simulation software that shows you how much of the chemical element is in solution with austenite over a range of temperatures. We can actually see that steel number one technically had a higher amount of chromium in solution. However, when we compare that to some values he calculated for the pitting resistance equivalent number, which factors in other elements that go into solution, we could see there's a point where these two materials intersect. The pitting resistance equivalent number is calculated by taking the elements that were in solution at given temperatures and plugging them into a formula which then generates a number. The higher the PREN is, the technically more corrosion resistant the material is because it is factoring in other things that will boost the effectiveness of the chromium oxide film. We can see here that the reason why steel 2 is technically superior is because it has a stronger, more enhanced chromium oxide film because it is being boosted predominantly by the molybdenum. The next obvious question that the more detail-oriented people were probably looking at is, well, if I want more corrosion resistance, why not take steel number one up to 2100 degrees Fahrenheit? Well, my detail-oriented friend, we actually have a micrograph that I made of steel number one. Now, while the features are probably not readily apparent besides the large chromium carbides, the matrix you are looking at is actually something called retained austenite, which is an incredibly soft and unstable structure that occurs when you have too much element in solution with the austenite so that it no longer hardens when it comes down to room temperature. So, this so happens to be incredibly soft and it is unusable as a knife blade. So we are not able to use 2100 degrees Fahrenheit to make this material more corrosion resistant. When we label it, you can see that there is some stress-induced martensite. Like I said, it is not a stable microstructure with retained austenite, but ideally you want your microstructure to look like this. Large residual primary carbides in a matrix of tempered martensite. And that's what happens when you work within the 100 degree range of austenitizing or hardening temperatures that you can use to make a usable knife steel. So then that begs the question, well, what happens if we go up to the upper limit of that 100 degree range for steel number one, such as what happens if we go up to 2000 degrees Fahrenheit, and it's only slightly lower than steel number two. So wouldn't that be a sweet spot? Pitting resistance equivalent number doesn't tell the full story. Chromium carbides themselves actually increase the likelihood of this galvanic corrosion effect. Because chromium carbides are essentially causing areas of high chromium concentration and areas of low chromium concentration, this is essentially causing a gradient that will increase this galvanic effect inside of the steel for more corrosion. Now when we look at steel number one and steel number two, we now see the shocking difference. Steel number one has a higher volume of chromium carbides, and this alone will increase this galvanic effect for corrosion. Steel number two has no chromium carbides, which means it doesn't have areas of high and low chromium concentration inside of the matrix like steel number one will be experiencing. So in conclusion, steel number two is more corrosion resistant than steel number one. This is because it has a stronger chromium oxide film. Having more molybdenum in solution will help boost the strength of that film, which we see in steel number two. Also, it has a complete lack of chromium carbides, which would increase areas of high and low concentration of chromium for a galvanic effect, which we do not see.